Lucy's kitchen. It's Lucy's kitchen. She's Lucy and she's got a kitchen. Lucy's kitchen. And now that we've got your attention, let's cook. Hi there. Welcome to Lucy's kitchen. I'm Lucy and this is my kitchen. Today we're going to make beef stroganoff. Beef stroganoff is a dish that has a very warm place in my heart. The first time I cooked beef stroganoff was for my husband. We were just dating and I said, let me cook for you. What would you like me to make? And he said, oh, well, I don't know. What do you cook? And I said, modestly, I can cook anything. And he said, well, make me beef stroganoff. And I did. Well, it was a big success and I got lots of brownie points for that one. To this day, it's a special dish we make whenever we have an occasion that's a little bit more than just comfort food. It's rich, it's tasty, and it's comforting at the same time. Beef stroganoff doesn't just have personal history, it has world history, it has its own history. People think, well, if it's named stroganoff, it must be Russian, and you would be right. It came from Russia in the late 1800s, a French chef to Count, you guessed it, Stroganoff invented this. He took some old uh, Russian dishes, some, you know, common casual dishes, and he Frenchified it up with sour cream and some tomato sauce and a few other little ingredients. And before you know it, he had something really special. It took off around the world. And here we are today having beef Stroganoff. So beef Stroganoff is actually a really simple dish to make. If you have everything cut, sliced, measured, and so forth, you can really throw this together very, very quickly. And it's very important to have the right ingredients and the right size of ingredients. So we start with the mushrooms. Now these are just regular white mushrooms and I just slice them up about four or five slices per mushroom. Half a pound of mushrooms makes about four cups and that's perfect. We've got a, um, got some butter here. We've got uh, eight tablespoons, which is a stick of butter. We'll talk about that in a little while. I've got some tomato paste, flour, salt and pepper, and of course, onions. And you want the onions to be diced pretty fine. Um, we don't want big chunks of onions in this dish. It's going to be lovely to just have the onion flavor and have the onions be very sweet in the dish and not some big, you know, slice. And we're also going to enhance this with a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Um, so while I have you here at the counter, I'm going to talk to you about the beef and we're going to flour the beef. Now the beef is the most important ingredient. What can I tell you? This is a luxurious dish. We use a very good cut of meat if we can because it cooks quickly, it stays tender, and it's absolutely delicious. Um, most of the time when people make beef um, stroganoff, they use a uh, beef tenderloin. And of course, you know that that is filet mignon. Well, that's a little bit rich for my pocketbook. So I scouted around and I actually found some New York strip steaks on sale. So I grabbed those and I trimmed off all the fat and I cut them into little, um, basically little ribbons. So they're very thin and about the width of the steak and about two inches long. So half an inch wide, um, an eighth of an inch thick. And this is important because again, we want this to cook quickly. Before we can deal with this, we have to flour the meat. And the reason we're doing that is to distribute salt and pepper and brown the meat nicely. And also because it will ultimately help thicken our sauce. So to brown the meat, I'm going to just go ahead and put it in here. We've got half a cup of flour. And I'm going to just, what I'm going to do is take my one teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of pepper. And later on in the cooking, I'm going to taste it and see if it needs more salt. So it, keep that in mind that this is not all the salt because we have almost two pounds of meat here. So one teaspoon of salt is definitely not going to be enough. The other thing about it is that um, Worcestershire sauce does add a little salt to it. And sometimes tomato paste 
tastes a little salty. So we don't want to over salt, but we also want to make sure it's the right balance of salt. Now, I like to work with my hands. As many of you who have been watching the show know, so I'm going to just take the meat and throw it in the flour, and I'm going to just toss it around with my fingers. And that's a good way to make sure that it is well floured, that every piece gets some of this really nice seasoned flour. And when you do that, also, you can make sure that, you know, because some of these pieces fold over and they stick together, you can just pull them apart. And um, this is just a good way to do it. I like to get my hands in there. Of course, I wash my hands constantly. Don't need to say that, but I do. So we're almost done. And these are beautifully flowered. Oh, I love it. These are going to be just marvelous. One of them, very sneaky. See? All right, that's it. So I'm done. Now I have to go wash my hands and then all the magic happens at the stove. So join me there. I'll see you in a minute. So our first step is to brown the meat and we don't want to crowd it or instead of browning, it'll boil. We don't want that to happen. We want this to cook and get a little crispy and a little crunchy. That flour and butter combination will do the trick. And, um, so we're going to, as I said, we're going to do it in batches. I'm going to take um, four tablespoons of butter and melt that. And to that, I'm going to add um, about a tablespoon of olive oil. Now, I like adding olive oil to butter because otherwise you get a um, you get burned butter. We don't want burned butter. We want this to get nice and hot and really do the trick. We're going to, um, you want this beef to hit the butter and start to crispen right away. And so you, the only way you can do that is if you have high heat. So if you have high heat, you have to add olive oil. Just, uh, okay. Now this is getting very, very bubbly. And of course, butter smells great. I'm going to uh, melt that. Now I've got my beef, and I'm going to shake off the excess flour as I add the pieces. I'm just sort of add them one at a time. And make sure that they're not stuck together again. And we don't, as I said, we don't want to crowd the pan. So we really are just laying them down in the hot butter and letting them crispen up. When this gets going, we're going to have to work pretty fast. Right now, it's still asking itself, does it want to get hot? Don't touch it, just leave it alone. And um, as soon as it's ready, you can tell because it will start to curl up a little bit and you'll know it's, uh, it's brown. But if you can't wait, you can always just flip one over and take a look. Oh, it's browning very quickly. Flip them over really quick. Now, one thing I will tell you it's nice to use a nice heavy-duty Dutch oven for this job. If you have one, use it. But technically, you can make this in a big, um, you know, a big frying pan too. It would work just fine. You could probably cook more beef at, at the uh, at the time. So. Oh. Now this is the hardest part. From now on, everything else is going to be easy.
I'm going to take a look. And yes, we're ready. I'm going to use a slotted spoon. I'm turning the meat down a little. Drain off some of the butter. And repeat. So here we are with our second batch. Throw them in there really quick. They don't start sizzling right away. Turn your heat back up. Actually, it'd be nice if I didn't turn it off. Well, we did that in three batches. Look at that. Isn't that great? Okay. Looks good, right? I know. I can't wait. All right. Next step. It's still going, it's on low. Take our onions and a little spatula, throw them in there. All right, now we want it up high again. Now why do we go back and forth between high and low? When you add something to a pot, like onions, it immediately lowers the temperature and you want the temperature to be high, but you don't want it to be high when you throw them in because they could burn, they could splatter. So it's just a safety precaution, but it's also a safety precaution for the food, because otherwise you could just easily burn it, you know, and you wouldn't want that. Now what the onions are doing is that they're grabbing all of that good flour and beef uh, flavor from the bottom of the pan. Mushrooms are going to do the same. This is going to give them an especially delicious tang in the final dish. We do this so that they sear up, so that they don't get mushy or, oh, little onion skin. After initially having this on high, we turn it down to low, and now we'll let them steam and give up some of their juices. And good time to add some of the other seasonings. So this is three tablespoons of tomato paste. Gives it a nice deep brown color. Stir that around so it kind of uh, mixes somewhat evenly. It doesn't have to be super even. That's nice. I'm going to put in my one teaspoon of Worcestershire. And I'm going to add my homemade beef broth, two cups. brown color as all of these ingredients are starting to meld together and we're getting a, an incredible wafting aroma oh it's hard to describe because it's so pungent and full of flavor I can't wait to taste this eventually not yet so now I'm going to turn it back up to high we're going to bring this to a boil All right, well, while we're waiting for this to come to a boil, um, I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about how to serve this. We serve beef stroganoff on wide egg noodles, the curly ones that you see in those crinkly packages at the store. Those are just perfect. They're very delicate, they're tender, and they're a nice foil for this rich and yet delicate sauce that, that uh, this produces. So. Don't be afraid to um, don't be afraid 
to just buy store-bought and cook them up. They're absolutely wonderful. So it looks like we're getting a boil here. I'm going to take my beef and put it right back in here. As soon as it's really boiling, like in the middle, then you turn it down to low, and then we just let it simmer for anywhere from three to 10 minutes, depending on your beef and how tender it is and how quickly it cooks. All right, it's been about, uh, oh, I don't know, five or six minutes, and it's nice and thick. I'm going to take a little taste, make sure we don't need some salt. So, yeah. I think we need some salt. Okay, so the last step is coming. I'm going to put the salt in, stir it around. This is our final thing and the final touch of richness. A cup of sour cream. all that stubborn sour cream out of there oh I love it and we're approximate approximating um, a cup a little more than a cup a little less it's all good now what we want to do is incorporate this into the sauce we're just going to gently mix it together as you can see the Sour cream is combining very nicely. At this point, we definitely want the heat to be on low. One thing we do not want to do is curdle this. Now, don't be too nervous about that idea. It's not going to curdle. But if, if you put it on high and it really boils, um, it might separate a little, and I don't think you really want that. So this step is the part that makes this stroganoff. Before this, it was some peasant Russian dish, and now it's a true classic. A French chef for Count Stroganoff invented this dish. And, oh, it's beautiful. I'm gonna let it simmer for just one minute to heat it thoroughly, and then we're gonna come over to the counter and have a taste. Smells delicious. I'm serving this today with our buttered noodles. And as you see, they're all curly and waiting for sauce. I've got some beautiful um, steamed asparagus. And this is going to be just marvelous. Look at that. Maybe a little bit more sauce. Garnish with a little parsley. And voila, it is beautiful. Oh my God, I can't wait to taste it. So this dish is uh, especially great for company because you don't need to have a knife the meat is so tender that you can just bite right through it. That's really good. Mmm, yum. Well, that's the difference between using a really good cut of steak for this dish versus some other cut of beef. It really is really good. My husband is going to be a happy camper tonight. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us here at Lucy's Kitchen. Don't forget to like and subscribe and join us next time when we share more delicious recipes from my kitchen to yours.